This tutorial is on 2.4 families of polynomial functions. So I don't really want to go straight out and tell you what a family of polynomial functions is right away. Maybe you can kind of figure it out through the warm-up. So crystal pieces for a large chandelier are to be cut according to the design shown. The graph shows how the design is created using polynomial functions. Here we go. Here is that design and it's really pretty to be completely honest. I like it. It's really colorful. Anyways, this is a family of polynomial functions. Each of these is a member of the family. But notice that none of the members are exactly the same. They do have something in common though. They all have the same x-intercepts. Now many things are different about them. For instance, some of the y values are different. I mean look at the different heights we have here. That could be caused because each of the members might have a different leading coefficient. So if I wanted to figure out each individual polynomial's equation, I'll probably need to know a little bit more about their x-intercepts, um, the degree of the polynomial, and maybe something about the leading coefficient, and so on. Are you starting to figure out what a family of polynomial functions is? Okay, just checking. All right, so here are two functions. We have f at x and g at x. And you know what? Before they had just given me f at x in standard form. So what I decided to do is I used my knowledge about factoring, long division, um, let's see what else, the remainder theorem and the factor theorem. And what I did was I organized it into the factored form. Now these two functions are from the same family. They're both members of that family. Notice that the blues are the same. We have the same yellows, same greens, and the same pinks. The only thing that isn't the same is the leading coefficient. This is a 1 and this guy's a negative 3. So that means that these two functions are not exactly the same. But again, they're from the same family. That's because they have the same zeros or x-intercepts. Each of the factors are the same. So if their factors are the same, that means that their x-intercepts will be the same. But again, the leading coefficients may be a little bit different. So here's a lengthier note just to say the exact same thing that I just said in words. It's for you if you wanted to pause the video and then go and write it down uh, for your own notes. So this is the same thing. Again, you can have whatever you want as your leading coefficient. This is what's going to differentiate all the members of the family. But each member of the family must have the same factors or x-intercepts in between. That's what causes them to be part of the same family. For example, the zeros of a family of quadratic functions are negative 2 and 1. So if I know that 1 is negative 2, I'm going to put x plus 2 as one of the factors. Then the other one, if that is positive 1, we're going to have x minus 1 as another factor. We're not going to put a specific number here. We're just going to put a because this is going to describe every single member of the family. If we put a number there, then that would describe one member of the family. That's what question B is asking you for. Write equations for two functions that belong to this family. So if I leave it blank, that means there's a 1 there. And this one I put a 4. But notice that the x-intercepts, or your factors, match the ones up here. Okay, so these are two examples of individual families. You can put whatever number you want here and here. They could be decimals, fractions, they can be, I don't know, a million if you really want to. But since they have the same x-intercepts, they're going to be from the same family. Okay, now what if we wanted to find a specific member of the family? It has to pass through this point. So what I have are my two factors. Here's a yellow and here's the green. And A represents the fact that this is every single member of the family. Now if we want the specific poly um, polynomial function that goes through this point, we have to take uh, this guy and put it into each of the x's. Then we're going to take this guy and put it into our y and we're going to solve for A. So once we solve each of the brackets, we're going to multiply them together and then we're going to divide it out on both sides. So a is negative 1 half, and that means this is a specific member of the family that goes through this coordinate. Okay, so here's a similar um, example, except it's just for a bigger polynomial. So here we have three factors, 
one, two, and three. They correspond to each of the zeros that was told to us. And then we have an A in the front to represent the entire family. So if we were to write two more functions that belong to this family, I mean, I just started making up stuff. Maybe 26 might be an A value or negative two. It really doesn't matter as long as your X intercepts and your factors are the same. Now determine an equation for the member of the family that passes through two and 42. So remember, we just did that. I wonder if I had the work there. Mm, nope, I guess not. But anyways, what you're gonna do is Make sure that you have your three factors and then put this guy into all of your X's and then this guy into your Y and you're going to solve and I got negative three as my answer. Okay, now if I had to sketch, all right, well, you already know that one X intercept has to be at positive three. That's right there. Then one has to be at negative five. That's this guy right here. And then this one means that it has to be at zero. Okay, so there are all my X intercepts. We also know that since there are three factors, it should be an X cubed. So this is a cubic um, shape, but because it's a negative three coefficient, well, we're gonna have to go the other way because normally I think a cubic should go this way. Okay, now if we wanted a little bit more detail towards our graph, like the turning points, we'd probably need to figure out the middle of your X intercepts and this looks like it's about the middle, negative 2.5. We're gonna sub it into all of our X's and then find out our Y value. So I got this as our Y value and that's pretty far down. Okay, so negative 103. And then I estimated that the other peak would be somewhere around here. So it's right there. All right, the last example is if they actually gave us the diagram, we didn't have to draw it ourselves, but we have to figure out the equation now. What we're gonna do is we're gonna look at all of the x-intercepts here, 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 and here, and we're gonna write them into each of the individual brackets. So this one is the zero, that means that x is one. This is at one, so x minus one is a factor. This is at negative two, so x plus two is a factor. And this is at three, negative three and a half, so that's positive seven over two. Let's see, positive seven over two, that's gonna translate to negative seven over two, which is negative three and a half. Okay, that one's gonna be a little bit tricky because it's a fraction. All right, so now notice that they gave us this little point right here. That's negative one and a half and about, what is that, 15? Negative 15? Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna put that negative 15 right there and then negative one and a half everywhere we have an X in our equation and we're gonna solve for our A. Okay, so that's gonna tell us the equation of this graph. All right, so I've simplified this. It gave me a four, simplified this bracket and so on. Here are each of the brackets, multiply them all together. We get 7.5 divide them both on either side, and then we get a negative two. So that is the leading coefficient. This is the equation for this specific graph. Okay, so remember, a family of polynomial functions is just a whole bunch of polynomial functions that have the exact same x-intercept.